Welcome to the ABQ Accent, where catalysts, innovators, and risk takers share what their accent is on their work. Like a spoken accent, we all have an inflection or emphasis on where we put our energy. Join us to learn how these folks are putting their accents to work, building their vision of the future, and how you can get involved. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us on the ABQ Accent. I'm Mariah Harrison, our host, and I'm here with Tina Garcia Shams, my guest today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. By the way, I just, I love your outfit today. It goes with our studio. <laughs> I planned um, that. On purpose. <laughs> um, and I am really happy to have you today. I was thinking back to, I was trying to think back on as to when we came into each other's lives and it might've been around UNM, it might've been just around the food scene. Um, but I think it was even before that. I think it was through the South Valley economic, oh, that would make and sense. you were doing the, kind of coffee impact and coffee yes yeah yeah that's how i remember okay you. yeah that's positive memory too yeah. yeah um so and and partly for that reason i'd love to sort of connect us again um through the work that you do and really highlight not just where you've come from but there's some very exciting things happening in your life these days with work and otherwise um so tell me a little bit about you um i know that you are essentially local a lobo um, very interactive in the downtown and food scene, but what else? Tell me more. Yeah, so I mean, I'm born and raised in um, Albuquerque. Uh, my, I'm probably 11th generation New Mexican. Amazing. My family yeah. is mostly from southern New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, but I grew up here, um, and I left uh, when I was in ninth grade. My dad was an air traffic controller, and we moved to Panama to Central America mm -hmm. for about three years. Um, I came back, um, finished school, went to college, um, and have just kind of stayed here, raised my daughter here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my home. How long were you abroad? For three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was definitely a, a defining time mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. and definitely changed my outlook. Um, I think changed me for the better. So um, it was a really, really great experience. It's a good time in life to get some perspective very much right. very much so yeah. yeah so you came back to school you and i actually have the same degree from unm i love that we do um and i had a political science um bent a little bit to mine is like you did you, your focus was in political science which I, which i would love to know more about what your impetus was to study that and then maybe how it informs or doesn't inform your work these days yeah, actually, that wasn't how I started. I was going to be a teacher mm. um, and uh, elementary school teacher. Yeah. Um, and I was the semester before my student teaching. I did like a, a one semester internship and I realized that is not what I wanted <laughs> to do. Um, not elementary. Not elementary. Yeah. And so I had a teacher at UNM, Ellen Gris Gris Grisby. Grigsby. Yes, she was um, really the thing that changed my mind, um, yeah. got me super engaged mm -hmm. in political science. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, not really sure. I think I just did it because I loved it yeah. and I, I loved the learning of it. Yeah. Um, but when I graduated, I uh, started working um, for an a engineering company uh, called LADA, mm -hmm. uh, Los Alamos Technical Associates, mm -hmm. and did mostly administrative work um, and then worked in word processing um, and then became a, an assistant to a team there mm -hmm. um, and stayed there. Then moved into the HR department um, and worked um, there for mm, 10 years, nine years, something like that. Oh, yeah. And then um, I was working with somebody who um, her husband, she was my boss, and her husband was starting a new charter school. Mm -hmm. And he had asked me to be on the board, and that school was Amy Beale High School. None other. Yeah. And so um, I joined the board um, before it opened. And I fell in love with the mission, mm -hmm. um, with the staff, and I just said, if there was ever an opportunity, I would love to, you know, come. And yeah. they created a position, and I became the HR director there. Um, and I did that for, you know, a few years, four mm -hmm. years. 
um, and then moved into, you know, as any startup, you do a little of everything. You know, there's no, everybody kind of wears a lot of different hats. Right. Um, and then I became an advisor to the students, and then I decided that I was going to go back to school and get my teaching degree, mm -hmm. um, but in um, in the high school um, in social studies. And really, it was more because I loved the students. It wasn't so much that I fell in love with teaching. Yeah. I just loved being with young people. Um, that age was really mm -hmm. interesting to me, um, just kind of the curiosity right. um, and the way that we taught. So that, that just really appealed to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was there for 11 years. Yeah. Um, and I'd had a lot of kind of loss um, just personally. My dad died, my sister died, my mom died. Yeah. And I just needed a break because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I really had not really taken time to, you know, kind of process. So I decided to leave. My daughter was also going to be a senior in high school. She played soccer. She was traveling a lot. And I really wanted to have at least some time to focus on her. Mm -hmm and spend time with her. And yeah. so I left Amy Beale. Um, <laughs> and very shortly after, um, a friend of mine, Eric Griego, who I actually served on the board with at Amy Beale, mm -hmm. um, reached out and said, hey, I'm consulting on this new project. They're looking for a, a program coordinator. Are you interested? And I said, no. Um, I said I didn't want to work full time. And he said, that's OK. Mm. I think they're open to whatever. So I um, I interviewed. And I, again, fell in love with what they were thinking about doing. Um, and I, there's, I've, I've realized I really love that startup kind of work. Okay. Um, yeah. I like being able to do a lot of different things, wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started working for them um, and quickly part-time became full-time and, um, you know, just really started to be engaged in all of the parts of the program. Mm -hmm. um, and what was that program called? So the Street Food Institute. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it was, it was, the mission has always been, um, we're an entrepreneurial training program mm -hmm. working with people who want to start their own small food business. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm not a food, I'm not a chef. I'm not in the culinary world. Right. I love to eat. Um, and that was really, you know, kind of my resume around food. Um, but I was very good at partnership development, at networking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is my home. So I was really um, engaged in the community. And so it seemed like a natural fit. Yeah. Um, and I had the education background. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really helpful. Um, and when we started, we were partnering as we still do today with um, C&M right. and their culinary program. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, so um, that was really, you know, it, I think it gave us a little bit of clout to be mm -hmm. able to have a partner like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started teaching community classes as well mm -hmm. as working in the culinary program there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really grown um, since then. You know, we were part of a foundation when we started. Um, it was part of the Simon Charitable Foundation. And that's a family foundation. It is yeah. out of Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm super grateful to them for supporting this and having the idea. Right. Um, and then the goal was always to kind of become our own nonprofit. So at the end of 2016, we um, spun off became our own nonprofit, and I became the executive director. So it was only about four years into it? Yeah, so we we started in 2013 kind of doing all of the foundational work. We launched in January of 2014, okay. and then we um, really, I would say, um, April of 2017 was really the, the when we really started our, the, our own work. Full yeah. 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 What is it? And there's a couple um, lanes I want to go back to. And, and first of all, you know, if some of you have listened to our podcast before, Dr. Becker from the, the executive director of 
Um, Amy Beale was on this podcast before, so if you don't know about that school, please go back and listen to that. But I think, one, I want to give you a lot of kudos because it sounds to me as I'm listening to your stories that you are an engine behind some of these projects and people could see that you would be there to, and, and committed to the vision because it, uh, and also the fact that you had your educational background and HR background melded, I think worked perfectly at the timing you needed all of those things for street food Institute. Yeah. I, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I feel like things just happened the way they were supposed to. Yeah. I wasn't looking, I had no mm -hmm. idea what this was. Um, I think I was just open to yeah. whatever might come my way. Um, and it just seemed to be a really good fit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that my background and my work at Amy Beal, you know, it really did support a lot of what I was doing there and that startup work and being willing to get my hands dirty yep. and take on any mm -hmm. role that needed to, to be done. I mean, I was the cafeteria lady yep. at Amy. I mean, I did, I did all kinds of things. So, you know, um, and you develop were part of developing the original service learning curriculum. I, right? I was to some degree. I mean, it was kind of developing, um, but I really took that on and took it to the next level mm -hmm. where it became a school wide, um, service learning where originally it was just seniors. Mm -hmm. Um, but it really kind of developed and Stephanie actually became the, mm -hmm. the community engagement director yeah. when I left. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. but, and you're still active there. I, well, yeah, yes, right. but, um, so I've been, I, I was on the foundation board up until just probably a month ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but after I left, you know, I, I stayed involved. Um, I was doing lit circles there, um, became a board member. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love that school. I'm, yeah. I'm deeply committed and love the work that they do. Um, right. so I'm really proud of that mm -hmm. and excited for them as well. So, yeah. Well, and being it, it's, it's also its own downtown sort of force. It's, and I love the way that, um, so many people are engaged in the school. It's not, it's, it's not its own little entity. It's very, very much engaged. In it. it is very community oriented. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was the, the whole idea behind moving mm -hmm. downtown. I, that wasn't originally the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, but it quickly yeah. really worked out, um, to be the best place for, for the school. Yeah. Well, and so back into your Street Food Institute, the startup phase, the moving into the 501c3, kicking it off, um, what is the framework of the Institute? Who are you serving? Who are you benefiting? And, and I know that you have a lot of partnerships to make it happen. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, the, our, it's a really diverse group of mm -hmm. people who come to the program, um, both in terms of uh, gender, in terms of socioeconomic, in terms of racial identity. Um, it really runs the gamut, um, which I love as well. You know, we have young people that are in college um, and we have people that are doing second careers, you know, that have retired. So, you know, cool. um, and so it, that's, that's really been from the beginning. Um, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of that also had to do with the partnerships that we had developed. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, we also do internships. So that's a huge part of our program. We do a lot of, even though it wasn't originally in our mission, um, workforce development mm -hmm. really has become a, a core part of what we do. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. So our, our entrepreneurs that are, you know, taking the class, but need a little bit more um, experience, um, do the internship with us. Mm -hmm. And then um, same with community members that have taken the class. And more recently, probably in the last six years or so, five years, um, a lot of high school students. So we work with different high schools across the city. Um, and so we have a lot of younger interns that are coming in and, getting experience. Um, so yeah. How long are they in the program? What does it look like? Well, it's, I mean, I think the other beauty of our program is we're really flexible. You know, I think it's, it's kind of allowed us to do a lot of different things mm -hmm. with a lot of different partners. Um, so the, the internship typically with CNM is 135 hours. Um, but you can also select to do 90 hours or 40 hours. Okay. So it really depends on the person. 
Um, same with high schools. So each high school is a little bit different. Um, we work with Future Focused, um, mm -hmm. and they have a very specific um, way that they do their internship. So students need to do a certain amount of hours. Um, we work, we've worked with Amy Beal students, same thing. They have a little bit of a different. So we really work to accommodate the students that are coming to us, um, both at the college level and at the high school level That's right. and the community um, mm -hmm. level as well. How many are active right now? Um, so we just had a young woman start with us today. Um, we had a young man from uh, Manzano who was with us all summer. Um, and then now that we're going into the new semester, we'll have more interns um, from CNM's culinary program. We usually have probably three interns each semester mm -hmm. um, working with us. Okay. So, yeah. And so it technically does follow, especially if they're doing internships, a semester type framework it it does for some people mm -hmm. if you're a community member not necessarily right you could start in you know may and work until july or you could start in may and work until december mm -hmm. it just a lot depends on the person and their schedule okay. and what they're able to do yeah. um you know we're not a typical restaurant so we don't have like exact hours every yeah. week where everything depends on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So our catering, our food trucks, when they're out and about, um, our cafe at CNM that we operate. So it really just depends on kind of our schedule and then what, what, um, our interns are able to do as okay. well. Yeah. Cause I think, I mean, the truck, at least the truck operates year round. It, it does. You know, we, for the last year, we've really taken a break on the with the truck services. Mm. We just started back probably in June, really starting to re-engage. Um, our trucks were, you know, older. They needed some, some TLC. And so we kind of pulled them offline for a little bit. But they're such a part of our training program. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been really trying to re-engage that, that piece of our business model. Right. Um, but it's not the kind of thing where you're setting up somebody just to start a food truck. You're really doing a full-on entrepreneurial experience about what it's like to work in the food industry. Yes. And, and right? Definitely. So I think a lot of people think of us as the food truck um, right. program. But and maybe at one point it was, but not so much. A little bit, yeah. I mean, we've always worked with a variety. Um, I think we have, for some reason, less food truck people these days. Mm. Um we work with a lot of caterers, a lot of bakers, um, people who want to do the markets, people okay. who want to do pop-ups, mm -hmm. um, people that want to start their own cafe or, um, you know, restaurant space. So it's it's a pretty diverse group of people who want to do a lot of different types of things. Yeah. So. Well, so how do you know when somebody's done? Do they get a certificate? Like, how do you say, go out into the world and we will we will order your food? So, it, I mean, it depends, right? So we do a 12-week class, and that class is really focused on the business side of things um, because what we do know is that if you don't know the business, mm -hmm. you can be the best chef, right. um, but it's going to be really difficult to survive. Mm -hmm. So we focus on the business, but within that 12 weeks, we also work on menu development, concept development, costing. Um, so we're in the kitchen working with them, mm -hmm. tasting, um, you know, giving feedback, that sort of thing. Okay. But, and, and they do get a certificate at the end, but we always say at the very beginning of each class, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this class is just the beginning. Yeah everything afterwards is really the the work yeah. and so you know sometimes we have people that at the end of 12 weeks they're ready to go mm -hmm. and you know we support them some people aren't quite ready right it's it's hard yeah. it's a hard business mm -hmm. um so they come back two or three four years later and then they say oh i'm ready now and great let's figure out where you are what yeah. do we need to do so we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one, like consultation and okay. helping them think through the process, mm -hmm. um, helping them with the process. So, um, so it's, it's pretty very, I mean, and you know, we have people that were students 10 years ago that still come back and say, Oh, I'm now going to do this. I'm going to, 
grow or um, expand? Yeah. Can you help me think about whatever? So I think that's also the beauty of the program is that it, we're really committed to our entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and they've become our family, you know, so. I would seem... I would think that it's a it, it's a bit of a connection there. Once they've come through, they're always a bit of a, the a part of the institute. Definitely. Yeah. And you're helping them level up. It sounds like at any point. They at any to. point. Yeah. 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 I do like that. Um, I want to read something that's on this bio of yours that might be um, indicative of your work, but also maybe the spirit of the institute as a whole. I hope they get this right. Shauna Nequist. Yes says, I think preparing food and feeding people brings nourishment not only to our bodies, but to our spirits. Feeding people is a way of loving them in the same way that feeding ourselves is a way of honoring our own createdness and fragility. Tell me what that means to you. I mean, I always say, and I, I believe deeply that feeding people is how you show love, mm. right? And I think people can taste it in Agreed. your food. Mm -hmm. They know when it's prepared with love. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for um, those that are cooking and serving um, to really show that, yeah. but also to really um, engage in their own creativity, in their own um, kind of ways in which they show that and passion and yeah. um and I just think food, I mean, we all need to eat, right? Every person. <laughs> um, and I think that it is definitely the equalizer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love the idea that, you know, you can sit next to somebody who is of a different, um, you know, ethnicity, a different class, a different, you know, idea, idea mm -hmm. but you all come together around food right. and... Um, I think there's such beauty in that. Um, I, I love that. It's a very personal thing. And when you, when you take a minute to share what's coming from your kitchen, what's coming from your heart, you're sharing a piece of yourself. I Definitely. And like yeah. you said, it's love can come in so many different sizes and shapes and you don't have to say it, but you can express it through food. Yeah. I mean, it's an art form, mm -hmm. right? I, I think, um, sometimes when we talk about art, we forget the culinary piece of art, right? It's the beauty in it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it, it can certainly be that for you, um, as the, as the consumer, but also you as the, the person who is preparing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Well, on a personal level, every time I put together a little bit of a meal for my dad, I can, I add a little element of what I think I got from my mom in the presentation of it. You know, it's not just about slamming together as peanut butter and jelly, but, but, <laughs> but uh, cutting the crust cutting, or whatever you yeah, need. Or a yeah, certain yeah. kind of jelly, a certain kind of bread, right. and what you pair it with. And right. at, at the very, you know, that's the easiest thing. But um, are you seeing, you know, I, I would love an example of how you see this creativity is coming out from maybe an individual you have a story about from the Institute or... Um, just something up because I feel like what you're like this spirit and the work that you do has ripples outside of just the Institute. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, there's so many, so many examples, mm -hmm. you know, of, of our students that have gone on and opened their own restaurants and are feeding people. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I also think about the young people that are in our kitchen with us mm -hmm. and how they then, take what they're learning and take it home, right? So, so especially I think about this young man who was with us this summer. Um, he, you know, really took everything so, you know, everything that we were teaching him and he would take home and he would come back and say, oh, I made this for my family or um, I tried that pasta, yeah. fresh pasta that we made. And... I love hearing that, right? Yeah. It makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I get such joy out of watching somebody else's journey and knowing that we've had just a little part of that, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's their work. They are doing right. the work. Right. But I feel so honored that they've allowed us to be a part of that, mm -hmm. a part of their journey, helping them express, you know, through their food. Mm -hmm. um, and also 
supporting their families, themselves right. and their families mm -hmm. um, through this work. So um, they're taking it seriously. Very. And yeah, very seriously. To heart. Yeah. Well, you've got a couple of things on the horizon, but I think one in particular you might want to share for this year for the Institute. Tell me your story about the coming of coming to brick and mortar. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we've been really fortunate that we have had great partners that have allowed us to be in their space, um, whether it's teaching our class, whether it's working out of a kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, but for the first time, we're going to have our own home, and we're really excited about um it's the Badellas Community Kitchen. Yeah. Um, it's under construction right now. We're getting really close. So Wait, is that your official name? The yes, the Badellas Community, Community Kitchen. Kitchen. Yes. I love that. Yes. So the Street Food Institute is not changing its name necessarily. No. But this is your building. Yes, it is our building. I'm so excited. So it will be an education space. Um, it will be a shared kitchen for entrepreneurs that are needing a commissary um, yep. service kitchen. Um, it's in the heart of Barela, so it's right off of 4th Street. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have the downstairs is our demo and education space, shared kitchen. Um, in, we'll have a plaza area right um, in front of that. Um, where we can have community gatherings, do additional programming. Um, and then there, there's three retail spaces mm -hmm. in the front. So um, two of them are going to be leased by um, current entrepreneurs. And one of the spaces will be ours that we will use as an incubator for okay. students that are in the program. Um, you know, they may want to do pop-ups out of there. They may want to do... Uh, maybe take three months to kind of get their systems and processes together so they yep. can kind of run their business out of there for three months. Um, so it'll be kind of, right, their own incubator. Yeah. Um, and then upstairs will be office spaces. So we'll have an actual office, which <laughs> I know that sounds so silly, but we are so excited yeah. to have an office. You know, yeah. we're in a kitchen, basically, um, which is where our office is. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're, we're I'm hoping for a grand opening in October. Um, okay. Yeah, so we're just... We're really excited, I think, not just about having it be our home now, but being a part of a community that has such a rich history mm -hmm. um, and really wanting to be a good neighbor yeah. and a good, um, you know, community partner um, for the neighborhood. Right. So we're really excited and, and allowing us to expand and do things that we have never been able to do before just right. because we didn't have the space. And um, so that's really exciting yeah. for us. Well, thinking about all that you've accomplished over the last 11 years without having your own space, I can't imagine. I feel like we're just going to, it's like another liftoff for you. It's another creative and set of energy. I think, we, so we just keep calling it SFI, like phase two. Yeah. Because um, I think this, this first 10, 11 years has really allowed us to, you know, create a good foundation. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, our reputation, um, it, it's important to us that we do what we say. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've, you know, developed that over time. You have an incredible reputation. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. I mean, um, and I think our, you know, th the work that we've done with partners, mm -hmm. um, I think has been really important. So now we get to kind of dream a little bit yeah. and um, imagine some new things and, um, you know, hopefully grow that partnership with other right. um, organizations. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I'd love to be able to support, so I want to know a lot more ahead of October, but we want to be able to share the event then ready to, when you're ready. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you have an amazing reputation for great food. Every time I see the Street Food Institute truck or caterers, out in the middle of nowhere at some wedding or something, I am there first thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been really fortunate that I've had some really amazing chefs mm -hmm. um, and staff. Mm -hmm. um, I always say we're small, but we're mighty. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we go to some crazy places <laughs> to to bring food to mm -hmm. to people, and you know, on their special day. And you know, we're really grateful that they've trusted us mm -hmm. to, to do that for a day that's so important to them. 
So I would recommend to the people, it sounds like you're still able to, in this transition to support catering events and you still have the school ongoing, that people go to your website and check out options to either support you or maybe become part of the Institute. Yes, definitely. So, um, you know, we're trying to do a little bit of revamping on the website to um, kind of bring in the Badalas Community Kitchen into that. Yeah. Um, but you can definitely um, get a hold of us for catering. Mm -hmm. You can um, get information about classes. Um, and definitely there's a donate button on yep. there, which, um, you know, we're, we're starting the naming rights campaign for the building. Um, and so we're always, you know, really looking for people to support us um, in that way. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a big leap for us. I mean, you know, we have to build capacity right. to be able to, to make this big transition mm -hmm. and, sustain. Um, and sustain it. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. I don't want to go into something and not be able to, you know, keep it going. Yeah. It's really, we're really committed to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, needing as all nonprofits, you know, you're always needing that additional support. I mean, we're lucky in that we are able to bring in, because we're a social enterprise, we're able to bring in, you know, 30 to 40% of our budget through our own sales. Mm -hmm. um, Smart. But, yeah. you know, that leaves a, a chunk of money that still needs to kind of, you know, through grant um, funding and, and individual donations, um, you know, so to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that shout out. Don't be shy. <laughs> it's the reality of it. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So in our time while we're wrapping up, I want to give you a couple more minutes because again, you are a force behind so many of these huge things and, and a staple in not only in your community, but in the entrepreneurial world. Um, what is it that keeps you down to earth? Um, energized? Uh, is there something that you sort of tune back into mentally, emotionally when you're not at work to, to relax? Oh, I mean, for sure. My family, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think, you know, that's definitely my grounding. You don't get to like have too big of a head when you're, uh, you know, your family's like, whatever did yeah. the laundry get done or, yeah. you know, whatever it is that <laughs> you're day to day. Um, but I, you know, I think to like my, my daughter, she's mm -hmm. amazing young woman mm -hmm. and I want to be a good model, um, for her. Um, and so I think I just try really hard to not, um, to, you know, just to kind of be who I am. I, I do things the way I, you know, am. I don't try to be something I'm not. Um, I try to be really true to that and yep. really honest. I think growing up here um, and loving New Mexico, mm -hmm. loving my home, mm -hmm. um, I'm really committed to that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that keeps me really grounded in terms of, you know, I want to, I want to do something positive. Um, and I think that the work that we're doing is, um, and I think when I think about all of the entrepreneurs that have come through and I get to see their success right. and their excitement, that gives me a lot of joy. Um, and I feel lucky that I've never like woken up and thought, oh, God, I don't want to go to work today. Like yeah. every day I'm so excited to be at work to, you know, see what's coming that day. Mm -hmm. Um, and to be with the people I work with because they're really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a blessing all around to be able to wake up each morning and, and see that the, the vision for the work also come alive in your students. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, we all take a little in, of inspiration from, I will say, for me and others probably, your point to stay true to yourself and that um, commitment to your work in your community is really powerful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> well, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we will um, add some notes about the event and socials and whatnot in our posts. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks, Mariah. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for being with us today on the ABQ Accent. Please come back and listen to another Accent.